Let's talk about everything you need to know to light characters for animations in Blender. So this is a default Blender scene actually. This model that I'm using right here is actually by Kaoru Sakaki. And you can see the art station here. They have some really amazing 3D anime sculpts that they've done. I'm pretty sure they actually sculpt for like real anime figures, which is crazy. Um, so really good person to follow and look to if you're looking to get into that kind of stuff. But amazingly, if we go to their store tab on their art station, which will be linked in the comment section below, by the way, uh, if we go to the store tab here and go to this pack right here, they actually have, and I'm gonna just show that, they actually have an amazing anime base mesh, uh, which is the same base mesh we're using for this tutorial, just for demonstration purposes, because I wanted to keep this as real world and useful as possible. So this is the base mesh we're using for this tutorial. Unfortunately, this is only available for ZBrush, meaning that this is in, uh, I think, ZTL format, and I had to import it into ZBrush then export it to Blender. I will provide a FBX of this model if you would like to use it just for uh, to follow along with this tutorial. You do not need to follow along with this tutorial. We're just gonna kind of go over the fundamentals of lighting, but taking notes I'm sure would be helpful. So that's the background of how this character model got into our scene here. And if you wanna download it, I'll have a link to that in the description below. Just keep in mind that might need to get taken down at some point. And again, you do not need to download that model to follow along with this tutorial. So let's talk about lighting. And for this tutorial, we're actually going to use Eevee. So I'm gonna to go to the uh, rendering tab right here and make sure that render engine is set to Eevee just so we can get instant feedback and results on our model here. By default, Blender is using this view right here, which is called the solid view. This has no lighting information in it whatsoever. It has this like preview, but this is not what your final animation is actually gonna look like. To get a preview of what that's gonna look like, you need to go to the top right here and go to the rendered view, or a faster way of doing that is by pressing Z on your keyboard and then going to rendered up here. You get this little nice pie menu. You can switch to wireframe too, or material preview, but in our cases here, we wanna go to rendered, right? So this is what Blender starts with. Every Blender scene by default starts with one light in it, and that is a point light. That is what this is called. And to make our scene look a little bit better, um, especially for previewing purposes here, I'm gonna go to the Render tab, then I'm gonna go to Shadows, and just for our purposes here, I wouldn't recommend this for necessarily every EV scene. But for our purposes here, I'm gonna max out the cube size and the cascade size right here for our shadow settings. And the reason why I'm doing that is just because that's gonna make our shadows look nice and crisp and it's gonna be a little bit clearer what we're changing and doing in this tutorial. Uh, just keep in mind by doing that, you're obviously gonna be degrading the performance in your scene at the cost of having sharper, higher resolution shadows by increasing these values. So yeah. I also want to go to the top right here to this little drop down right here where we can turn on and off the scene world. So for our purposes here for this tutorial, I'm gonna turn off the scene world that is in the default Blender scene, then turn the strength of this very low to something like you know, 0.1 here, um, which is just changing the settings of our HDRI as we're previewing our lighting changes here. So yeah, but without further ado, let's actually talk about lighting. So by default, this is a point light that is in your Blender scene. And to move it around, all you need to do is click on it, press G, and bada bing, bada boom, you have a point light moving around and affecting the light on your character, like so. And if we go to this light, I believe, yeah. It actually might be a dimmer for you by default. It might be 10 watts, which is why it was like so bright beforehand. To get to the default value on any value in Blender, again, mouse over it and press backspace to go back to that default value. Um, I'll turn that a little bit up to like 100 to make that a little bit more obvious though. And as we can see here by looking in this tab, there are four different types of lights in Blender. There's a point light, which is the default light that comes with every Blender scene. There's a sun, spot, and area light. And a point light you can kind of think of like a torch. So if I actually click on this color panel right here, we can actually change the color of our light and it'll make my analogy a little bit more obvious. So. I will click on this little white part right here and then click on this orange part of the color wheel to make this 
point light orange. Now, as I move my point light around, you're gonna see that the shadowing on our character is changing and moving around because the way a point light works is basically light is bouncing off in every direction around it kind of evenly. It's like a spherical light that's like going everywhere. That's the same way, you know, a lantern or a torch works or like a lightning bug, that kind of stuff. That's how a point light works in Blender. It's like a spherical radius around the light that it's lighting up. So as we move this around, you can see that the shadows on our character are changing because on a 360 degree radius around our light, that is where light is coming out from. And because of that, because it's a point light, if we rotate it, you're gonna notice something interesting in that nothing is actually happening and it's not being affected by our rotations whatsoever. That is because this is a point light and the only thing that matters with a point light is the point of space that it occupies. So translation, very important for a point light. Rotation does absolutely nothing on a point light, which is the exact opposite behavior of the sunlight, which we'll get to in a second here. Um, but before that, I wanna talk about the shadow settings right here. Um, because, you know, clip start and bias, those are kind of useful sometimes. You can hover over them to see what they do. But the one I'm using constantly is this setting right here, which is contact shadows, which basically, as it says here, it uses screen space ray tracing to have correct shadowing near occluder or for small features that does not appear in shadow maps. So this basically uses screen space ray tracing to get more accurate, realistic shadowing on your characters or objects in your scene. So if I click this, you're gonna see the difference right off the bat. If we look at her fingers here, those are receiving much more realistic shadows. If we look at uh, the crotch area right here, you can see again, the shadows are cascading in a more realistic way. You see, look under her neck, you can also see that. It's just a little bit more realistic of a result, especially on the sunlight um, when it comes to the cast shadows. But again, this is not for free. This comes at a performance cost. So if you enable this on like every light in your scene, it might start to chug. Just keep that in mind. But now let's talk about the sunlight. So any light in Blender, you can switch to a different light type just by going, just by selecting it rather, and then going to this green tab, then clicking sun, it, for example, if we wanted a sunlight. But again, you can also press shift plus A and then go to the light tab and we could spawn in another sunlight right here. But for our purposes here, we're just going to click it to sun because that's just a little bit faster, right? Um, so this is the sunlight. And unlike the point light, if we press G to move around the sunlight, absolutely nothing happens. So the sun is kind of like the opposite of a point light where the only thing that matters on a sunlight is the rotation. And as you might expect, the sun functions a lot like our sun where very bright and create very harsh, sharp shadows, um, but it's nice, even lighting across your uh, scene. So if I lower this strength a lot, because this is very bright to like five here, you're gonna see that it's a very nice, even lighting across our figure as we're rotating our sun around like so. And by rotating it like this and turning on contact shadows on and off, I think this is an even more obvious example of what contact shadows do. It's a lot more realistic of a result, but it comes at a performance cost for sure. So just keep that in mind. You might also notice this little dot right here on our sunlight, which is not a thing on the point light because this lets us aim our sun, which is really, really cool. So if I hold left click on this, then drag onto somewhere on our model, it'll basically aim our sun exactly to that part of the geometry on the model. So by releasing left click right there and zooming in, we can see that it's dead on exactly where I put my mouse there, but there's also a shortcut for that. So we can see by hovering over it here, it's shift plus T. So if I press shift plus T with my sunlight selected, I can aim my sunlight around like this, which is really, really cool. Um, so that's just a really fast way of like rotating and aiming lights. Um, which is particularly useful for the next light type, which is spot. So unlike sun, which is kind of like universal and you know, it's like hitting everything in your scene, spot is a lot more focused. It's a lot more like stage lighting where if I increase this power here to like, I don't know, 180 um, and then press G to move it uh, and then shift plus T to aim it. This is a lot more like, you know, the spotlighting you'd have on a stage for a play 
or something like that where you have barn doors on your light and you're kind of focusing it in one specific area. So we can actually make this a little bit more of intense and obvious of an effect by changing the spot shape setting, which this spot shape setting is only available for spotlights. So if I change the size here, so it's a little bit more focused like that, we're gonna see that, oh, maybe it actually doesn't get more intense. That might be a cycles thing. <laughs> My apologies. But in any case, um, that does limit the cone radius on this light. It'll just make your light a lot more focused, right? And unlike the sunlight and unlike the point light, both translation and rotation on a spotlight matters. So we can move our spotlight around, say we want it in front of our character, press G to move it. Then we press Shift plus T to aim it at them. And look at this, it's very, very cool how we can like aim that around and do highly specific centralized lighting on our character if we want like a really specific, like tight lighting setup. So that's pretty cool, right? Uh, and again, we can turn on contact shadows to get a little bit more realistic shadowing on them. Let me turn this up a little bit more just to make it a little bit more obvious what that's doing, right? You can also change this blend setting right here, which will just change how sharp the fall off on the edge of our spotlight is. So if I lower this a lot, you can see that it comes super like pin sharp um, fall off. But if I increase this, the shadowing becomes very gradual, very like gradual gradient over the surface of our figure here. And again, we can change this to any color we want by clicking on this color. Say we want this blue, bada bing bada boom, it's blue now. Um, and for all these lights, you've probably noticed this diffuse specular and volume setting. This is just for changing the how specific light interacts with either diffuse, specular, or volumes in Blender, which sounds really confusing, but I'm gonna explain it by turning the diffuse all the way down uh, and notice what happens when we do that. This is just the specular highlights that our model is receiving because I believe this is using a principled BSDF uh, material on it, which means that that does have specular and diffuse just built into it. So by just turning on this diffuse, we can kind of like exaggerate the specularity of this light or can you actually set this to two? You can. So if you want to exaggerate the specularity on something uh, via doing it on the light, this is a great way of doing it. Or if you want to like tone down the how bright a diffuse part on just one light is, this is just a nice little art hack where you can kind of, you know, more, more carefully control how the materials are interacting with the lights in your scene. So that's a nice option to have. I'm gonna return all these back to one though. And the final light type in Blender is area. So if I click on area, we're gonna see that we're not actually seeing too much of a difference, but if we zoom in on our light, you know, press shift, zoom in on this, you're gonna see that this actually has a little bit of a plane on it. So if I hold left click on this, I can actually resize this rectangle shape, right? Uh, and then if I release, then bring this closer to my model, it's gonna come a little bit more obvious what this is doing. So area is exactly what it sounds like. It makes an area of light that it projects light from, or an area of volume that it's projecting light from, I guess more accurately. So in our case here, the shape of our light is a rectangle, but you can actually change that. So I can click right here, to change this to a square shape. And if we resize it, you're gonna see that's always gonna be a square shape. I can make this a disc shape and resize it like this. Uh, and I can also make this a ellipse shape, which is just like our rectangle shape in that it's kind of an unlocked aspect ratio like that. And you can see by looking at our character here, changing the size of this is changing how the shadows are falling off. So having it bigger here, it's making a lot more of a gradual um, transition between the light and the dark shadows here. But if I make this real uber tight, makes it slightly sharper. Yeah, it makes our shadows a little bit more sharper in how they fall off. So in our case here, I'll make this nice and big and lower the power way down to like 100-ish, like so. And yeah, that is basically an area of light. It's actually one of the least complicated ones. Like there's no special settings here. Um, you have contact shadows. Uh, and you can modify all the previous settings of the last ones. It's actually largely the same as all the other light types. So if I wanted to do nice little portrait lighting here, I could set this to a rectangle shape, then I could press shift plus A 
to add in a sunlight. And then I can rotate this light around by moving it over here, then pressing Shift plus T to put it behind her and actually raise that up a little bit more and push Shift plus T to rotate that again, just as a fast way to get room lighting because I'll set this to a 10 maybe. Yeah, just to get some nice room lighting around here. Then I can grab this area light by clicking on it, press G, Shift plus T to aim it at her, G again, Shift plus T to aim it at her, and we can add a fill light, as they're called. So I could press uh, Shift plus A, then add a spotlight, press G to move the spotlight, Shift plus T to put it on the shadowed area of her right there. Then I can increase the power to make it a little bit more obvious. And look at that, we have some really nice portrait lighting that's like nice and smooth, but we got that nice like highlight around her to like accentuate her form. And yeah. That's kind of how lighting works in Blender. You can also animate all of these lights by turning on auto key, uh, just shift selecting all of them like this. So that's all of our lights selected. Then I'm gonna press hide, insert location, rotation and scale. Then I'll go forward to frame 30 here. Uh, just do a different lighting setup. I move this here, press shift T, move this here, shift plus T. And we don't have to key these because we have auto key on and we keep the first keyframe there, right? Um, then we click on the sun, rotate it uh, a little bit like that. And then if we go to the first frame, play this back, our lighting setup changes pretty drastically there. And it's all animated in real time thanks to Eevee. We get a nice little preview of all the changes we just made. And just like with cameras, we can animate these different values in Blender by pressing, hovering over them and pressing I. Then I'm gonna go back to first frame here because this is the sun strength setting, then press I again. Now if I go back to frame 30, where we have that first keyframe, or I guess second, because there's one on frame 30 right now and one on frame uh, one. So if I go to that keyframe and increase the strength to like, well, we'll decrease the strength actually to zero, just for preview purposes here, we're gonna see that our sun will gradually lose strength until completely fading out at the end there. And we'll make that a little bit more obvious. Playing this back. And yeah, that's how you animate lighting. That's basically everything you need to know about lights in Blender. Uh, and yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment section below. I hope it was helpful. Check out the Patreon if you haven't already and see you in the next one. Take care. Congratulations on finishing this tutorial. It might feel like a small step, but you're now one step closer to animation mastery. And if you want access to an exclusive Discord community, exclusive rewards, and help ensure that I can keep making tutorials for you just like this one, check out my Patreon.